The script you are about to hear is entitled An Introductory Discourse to Soulcraft. It was written and recorded in 1950 by my father, William Dudley Pelly, to introduce a course of 156 lessons which he called the Soulcraft Scripts. My name is Adelaide Pelly Pearson. Before turning on my father's introduction to Soulcraft, it seems to be appropriate for me to say a few words of explanation about my father and the philosophy he recorded and elaborated into many volumes, the philosophy he called Liberation Soulcraft. You will note I have said this discourse of my father's was recorded in 1950. The first thing to observe about Soulcraft is that it does not deal very much in time frames. It deals in principles and the fundamentals behind life itself, with eternal verities, in fact, which do not change and are as pertinent and relevant today as they were 50 years ago or 2,000 years ago or 1,000 years into the future. One of the few time frames mentioned is that of the closing of the Piscean Age and the opening somewhere around the year 2000 of the Aquarian Age. The Piscean Age, commencing approximately with the birth of Christ, has been the age of water and of steam. We are now going into the Aquarian Age of air, of electricity, and electronics. The two ages overlap, but it is easy for almost anyone to see and understand the difference in emphasis between the last 2,000 years and the space age future into which we are rapidly moving. Along with the radical changes in our transportation, our communication, our systems of manufacture, and other physical changes in our way of life, there are also differences being displayed in our ways of thinking about things. Long-standing social institutions, such as marriage, are undergoing stress and strain. Economic systems are experiencing traumatic difficulties. Educational systems are creaking, if not cracking up. Religious thought, which is supposed to have all the answers, is being torn apart. Many fundamentalists, in varying degrees of panic, are trying to retreat into the 19th century. They are not preparing themselves for a new age. They are headed for a rough time. Forward-looking ministers have little to preach but the basic Christian tenets of loving thy neighbor and doing good to thine enemies but it is a hard row to hoe without also accepting a couple of fundamentals that were once almost universally held, were lost sight of, at least to the Western world, and are now being reconsidered in wider and wider circles. The first fundamental is the continuing existence of the soul spirit throughout our eternity. This has always been generally accepted by most followers of Jesus Christ, but the logical extensions of this concept are not generally thought through. The second fundamental is the acceptance of three-dimensional earth, that is, matter, as a schoolroom to which we return time after time until we have learned all the lessons that the limitations of matter have to teach. This is, of course, the principle of reincarnation, accepted in the Far East since time immemorial, and now being given a second look in the West, as the Aquarian Age opens. Many good church-going Christians will recoil from a suggestion of repeated lives, even though they have long since renounced the idea of heart playing for the rest of eternity. A very dear lady of my acquaintance pronounced her judgment with warmth. My goodness, it's too simple. It answers too many questions too easily. This lady came from the old Puritan school of of we are born to sin and suffering, and anything that comes easily, even an explanation, has to be sinful or in grave error. A good many other people are pleased to take Tim Leary's statement as their own. I don't believe in reincarnation, and I didn't the last time I was here either. This gets a laugh, puts a cap on the subject, and permits everybody to get away from a sticky topic. Soulcraft, however, accepts, indeed is based on, reincarnation as a fact. It also accepts that under certain special circumstances it is possible to communicate with persons on the other side of life, those who are commonly labeled dead. 
My father in the following discourse explains about his own startling and unexpected projection into the world of ESP, extrasensory perception. He also tells about how he began to take the messages from the other side that he was instructed to transcribe and publish as the Liberation Soulcraft Doctrine. This, he discovered, was his life work, to which all his other experiences, from a boyhood in a hidebound New England parsonage to young manhood in the top echelons of magazine publishing, were only preliminary training. I was not with my father in California when he had the seven minutes experience. I was in high school in the East at the time, but I saw him very soon thereafter and realized his life had been completely altered. I saw the seven-minute article as it was published in the American magazine in March 1929, and I saw the avalanche of letters it started. I worked in the office in the Salmon Tower in New York as the League for Liberation classes were started around the country. I saw how this new transcendental information was soaked up by thousands of persons like rain on a parched land. The 156 lessons being introduced by my father in a moment are essentially what began in the Salmon Tower. That was 50 years ago. As I have said, the material is just as timely, just as relevant today. What is gratifying to me, looking back over the 50 intervening years, is what a flood of material has appeared since that time, substantiating and upholding the concepts that appeared in the Liberation Soulcraft material and in very few other places. Liberation Soulcraft began its teaching before Bridie Murphy, before the Rhine experiments at Duke, before Thelma Moss and her scientific approach to mental telepathy and the behavior of consciousness before Helen Wambach and her studied approach to hypnosis and regression to previous lives, before L. Ron Hubbard discovered his subjects in reverie on the time track were going beyond the birth incident to previous existences, before the late Bishop Pike talked with Ina Twig and Arthur Ford and courageously published If This Be Heresy, before Thomas Shugrew's book There Is a River brought Edgar Cayce to national attention, before Colonel Ed Mitchell went to the moon and then set up his foundation for noetics to investigate the as yet unexplored powers of the mind. I could name a dozen more. All of those experiments and approaches, by and large, bear out the truth of Soulcraft's basic assertions. I am not suggesting any of those people took ideas from Soulcraft. I am suggesting that certain basic assertions of Soulcraft about what the life and death experiences are and how life could be lived with greater pleasure and facility if these processes were better understood are basically sound as they are borne out by the best of the subsequent material. My father was indeed one of the great pioneers in this field. Listen now as he tells you about his own never-to-be-forgotten experience. <laughs> 